Um, so, uh, all through my life I was able to pop in for a class and my aunt was a big influence in my life. I mean, mother sometimes wasn't present. But uh, I appeared at like three and four years old uh, in Auntie's dancing um, <coughs> dues, uh, galas that she put on for us with her students. And um, the first song I think I ever sang was a little song called I Wonder Who Lives at Number Four. Uh, I've never seen anyone open the door. The steps are all rusty and old and grey. I'm sure someone's feet must have worn them away. <laughs> but nobody comes, nobody goes. The gate only bangs when the wild wind blows, etc., etc., etc. It goes on, the, dove, the door's rusty, and I once, once saw a face at the window pane. Somebody lives there, I'm almost sure. Do you suppose there are fairies at number four? <laughs> 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 yes, I did. Yeah, well, my mum was and should have been a very fine concert pianist. She, she got her degrees at a ridiculously young age, and life and, and uh, uh, the things that, you know, fate just had other ideas for her, but she was a great pianist, and so I grew up listening to Grieg and Rachmaninoff, and particularly Chopin and Defina, and uh, uh, my stepfather was a tenor, and they had a kind of... Um, there, and then she held her arms up like this, and uh, then enormous soaring leaps, and my mother thought, my God, this lady must be an extraordinary dancer because uh, she's only indicating, but uh, she was rather an old woman and, and not particularly pretty. So she decided to see what it was that night on stage. So she stood in the wings and this lady came out in a hideously over fussy evening gown and she was followed by a troop of performing dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he was a uh, Rex 
this at times could be what we refer to as being a very windy gentleman. <laughs> and occasionally would, you know, let fly on stage and it was a little bit <laughs> The first time he did it, uh, we were doing a scene at the end of My Fair Lady, and I write about it in the book. And, uh, uh, we're doing a scene at the end of My Fair Lady, and it's the scene where Eliza has run from his house to his mother's house. And she is telling his mother uh, the difference between a lady and a gutter snipe is not how she behaves, but how she is treated. And uh, Henry Higgins shows up, and all Rex had to do was pace up and down at the back of the stage in a kind of fury that I was getting my comeuppance in a way and saying what it was to be a true lady. And I had just finished my speech about being a lady when Rex let fly with a, uh, as I describe in the book, a machine gun vault. <laughs> and the, the orchestra down here looked up onto the stage. <laughs> the first few rows of the orchestra stalls were somewhat stunned and <laughs> And it was at the exact moment that Henry Higgins' mother had to turn to him and say, Henry dear, please don't grind your teeth. <laughs> so, of course, you know, it's very hard to keep a straight face when that kind of thing is going on. So, every, I had to finish the scene with Rex, and he couldn't have cared less. <laughs> every part of the scene was mine. I was telling him off and telling him, you know, giving him the, the way Eliza does at the end of My Fair Lady, and I had lines like, uh, so you are a motor bus, all bounce and go, and no consideration for anyone, I said. That was one of Eliza's lines. And then the song that I have to sing is called Without You. And uh, Rex just has to stand there and listen to it. And I could see my lines coming at me from a distance, and I knew that I was never going to get through them. And I had to sing, No, my reverberating friend. <laughs> about 20 minutes after because there were endless pauses where we, I particularly, tried to get myself together. <laughs> we have some questions from you.